Shalom, Shalom, Most High Christ bless. We are TTIC, and I'm going to read the disclaimer. TTIC, also known as the Truth in Christ, is a Bible-based organization. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. We teach the Bible as it is written. We are not a hate group, nor do we teach violence. We do not condone any acts of hate or violence against any race, ethnicity, gender, and religious <coughs> groups. We firmly believe in abiding by the laws of the city and state. If you witness any member of TTIC committing a crime, please contact us and the proper authorities. Shalom, shalom, most high Christ, bless. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. I'm Officer George with TTIC. I'm Officer Jabal. Today, uh, this class is going to be uh, kind of unique. I had one some time ago. Uh, just listening to the news, and um, some, about a month or two ago, some of you may remember, you know, the, they, the other nations always coming out with something, uh, new titles and new uh, verbiages when they feel threatened. A few months ago, I kept hearing this thing about uh, critical race theory, critical race theory, and I'm watching the news, so I started getting the gist of it. And... What I noticed was the, the other nation, which would be the Caucasian race, they had a problem with the continuation of studying of uh, not just so much of black history, but what it was, it was the um, in-depth, um, what's the word I'm gonna use for that? The, um, they didn't want their kids, say put it this way, uh, say, they didn't want their kids growing up knowing the real deal what was behind the slavery. How did the black people get to America? What happened? These people come all at once become concerned about their little grandkids and great nieces and nephews and such. These little kids growing up knowing that their forefathers, what they did to black people to build this nation of America. They're trying to cut that thing out, dealing with critical race theory. Then next thing I know, I'm hearing people use the phrase on the news, replacement theory. And I was watching the news a few weeks ago, and uh, MSNBC, uh, the CNN one, and they was talking about this, and they were showing in the background, it had a group of, I guess they were, a white supremacist or neo-Nazi group or whatever. It was a group of men, they marching down the street and they was chanting this chant. And it, I, I may not get it right verbatim, but it was on the, on the, on the note that they were saying, we will not be uh, ruled by the Jew. We will not be ruled by the Jew. And that kind of hit me there for a minute. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, it's, it's a whole group of white Men, big burly some of bucks, you know, they looking mean, their countenance was, oh man, they just look like they could chew you up and spit you out. We would not be ruled by the Jew or whatever. So these people are, are concerned about something. They are very concerned about something. We know that uh, we, the Israelites, we have hit the streets. We start teaching uh, the word of God as it is written. And these, it's a lot of people threatened by that thing. Our people just look at us one in one kind of way. They, a lot of them may be threatened in a, in a sense, but these other nations are really threatened by us. In today's class, I don't know if I said the title already, but it, it's uh, it's a question. Is it, it's, it's it's is it replacement? Is re, is it replacement theory? Or is this a fact? Now we're going to dig into the Bible to see if this thing is true, if it's fact or fiction, so to speak. Let's go, give me Job 9 and 24. Job 9 and verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Now the thing of it is, the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. That's what it says. Anytime you get something in your hand, you're in control of it. If you're driving down the street in your car 
and I'm riding with you. You ain't controlling that car. My life is in your hands, so to speak. Your foot's on that gas pedal. You've got your, your foot can, uh, control the brake. Just like this world. Somebody controls this earth, this world, we, this planet that we live on. It's a group of people. And, a lot of, and, and more than you think, it's a group of people that have come together with one consent. And they all different in a sense, but they have the same objection, objective, and that's to rule. Now, this speaks of the wicked. Even though all nations, we have wicked people in our nations, we have uh, people that, you know, do bad things, you can consider them wicked. But the Bible speaks of the wicked. Let's give me, give me Malachi. Let's see what the book of Malachi says about this. Book of Malachi, chapter 1. We're going to go from verses 2 and 4. Malachi 1 and verse 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet you say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Now Most High said they would call them. This is a particular people. And this particular people are going to be called the border of wickedness. The border of of something is either the beginning or the end of something. Just like the border of your shirt or the border of your table. It's either the beginning or the end of something. Now, when you look at this thing, Mosai said these particular people, when he gets done with them, the whole earth pretty much, people are going to look at these people and know that who, who, who the, what the Bible is talking about, those who read the Bible, those who study the Bible, pay attention to it. Because there's a lot of our people don't even know if you was to read that to them, they wouldn't know which they wouldn't have a clue as to what you're talking about. And it's going to be a people that the Most High God is going to have indignation towards forever. So that shows something there. It's going to be a change somewhere. Uh, these churches today speak God loves everybody, and and when and, and uh, when I was growing up, that's all I knew was that when. When God comes and Christ comes again, it's going to be hugs and kisses and so so forth. I never knew that God hated someone. Now, if we could, let's give, me, give me that Romans. Let's just go to Romans 9 and 13 real quick. And then we'll bounce back. Romans 9 and verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now, right there, even in Romans, going into the New Testament, it speaks of most is talking about Esau. I mean, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. So now we're clarifying the fact that the most high God hates somebody. A lot of Christian folks, they, they can't believe that thing that God hates. But when it says it is written, anytime you come across something like in the Bible, it means it's written somewhere else. So if you go to Romans and was reading that, now we know that it's written. It was in Malachi where it was written. Read that again in Malachi where it speaks of that. Just repeat that real quick. Malachi 1 in verse 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Jacob's, was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Okay, that's enough. But again, right then and there, Mosai repeated that twice. I love Jacob, but I hated Esau. So now you got to keep this title in your mind, replacement theory. Is this thing a theory or is it fact? Let's go to the book of Ezra, 2nd Ezra, and we're going to go to chapter 6, verse 9. 2nd Ezra 6 and verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that oh, followed. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 8. Let's verse eight. 8 first. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, and with Jacob and Esau were born of him. 
Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. So now this means something. When you read that, this has a meaning to it. A lot of people would read that and would go straight over the top of their head. Read it again. Verse 8, And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, and Jacob and Esau were born of him. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Now, this, you have to know where to go to pick up on actually where this happened at. It's, and you have to go to Genesis. Let's go take the people to Genesis, and we're going to go to chapter 25. Genesis 25. And we're going to, let's read, uh, let's start out with 25 and 25, verse 25. Genesis 25 and verse 25. And the first came out red all over like an hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. Now, if you notice right there, and I've got to give you these little particulars. It says that the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. Now, they named him Esau which means wasted away because Esau had no pigmentation in his skin. And when there's a babies, when they come out, they're crying or whatnot. And so, you know, they strain in with that little cry and they beat red. This little kid came out and beat red. You know, so he looked a little different than his brother Jacob. What did they say about Jacob? And after that came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. But did they, did they uh, say what Jacob looked like? Nope. I wonder why that is. He looked like everybody else. He looked like everybody else. When that baby was born, he looked normal. He was he was he was a child that was looked like every other child that had been born on the face of the earth. Esau was the only child when he came in to the earth, when he came into being, when he came out of his mom, he looked different. So they like, whoa, look at this little kid, you know. He's red. He's, he doesn't even have any, no kind of brownness or anything to his flesh. What, what verse was that? That was verse 26. Uh, let's read, go, go on to 27. And Isaac was three, uh, I'm going to start with verse 26. Again. Okay. After that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. Esau became a cunning hunter as these boys grew. You know how when boys get to a certain age and they start venturing out, doing things and exploring, and they, they get better at certain things? You know, they start, uh, uh, they have a natural knack to pick up certain things. So this Esau, he, he started spending his time probably out there in the weeds and the woods, catching squirrels, catching little animals and stuff until he got bigger. He started catching bigger animals. So he became a cunning hunter. Go ahead, it was, read the rest of it. A man of the field. A man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Jacob was a plain man that dwelt in tents. Now think about that thing. If you go to bookstores, I remember going to bookstores years ago, and I would uh, just browse around and stuff, and I would see these books with, with hunters on them and men that hunted and, and, and so forth. And all the men that I seen that was doing the hunting, they were the white men. They were white men. I mean, you know, uh, that's what I seen. They had the camouflage stuff on. Uh, or when I looked at old Tars and movies and stuff like that, you see the white men going through the jungles with the rifles and they have one of these safari hats and they have their little get up on. And, and that's what they did. They, they was hunting rhinoceroses and, and bull elephants and stuff like that. They even, uh, if they didn't have the big guns, they had the, uh, what is it, the Bowen arrows and so forth. And, and, and they, they just had this knack to want to hunt animals. Was that it on there? That was it. Okay. Uh, what was that, 28? 27. 27. Yeah, 28. And let's go to 28. Verse 28. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. Now, Isaac did love Esau because he, like a father would, that's my boy, you know, he goes out there and got a lot of meat to eat. And, you know, we're going to do some barbecue in the day, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. So he loved Esau for that thing, Read. But Rebecca loved Jacob. But Rebecca, the mom, loved Jacob because it said that Esau, when he, he, was, a, he was a plain guy. 
you know, he didn't do all that. He didn't do all that hunting and stuff. He liked to, you know, just hang around the house and everything. It didn't mean he had things that he didn't know how to do, but he, he wasn't, he was, he wasn't anything like his brother Esau. <laughs> what, what verse was that? Oh, 28. 28? Uh, keep reading. Go verse 29. <clears throat> and Jacob saw a pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Now, I, I, read, I had to read this for a reason because. When Esau came from the field, he was feeling faint. He hadn't eaten, hadn't had a good day. He didn't, he didn't catch nothing. So he seen his brother, Jacob, fixing a big old pot of some kind of stew. Uh, you know, there's variation, variations to this. Um, and when Esau seen him, he said, man, you know, I want, give me some of that to eat. You know, he said, I want some of that. Did he say he wanted some of that same red pottage? Did he say that? So feed me, I pray thee, with that same red so pottage. With that same red pottage. So think about it. Obviously, that pottage wasn't even probably done. I think the meat was still kind of, kind of, kind of raw. Mm -hmm. It was red. Uh, and, and and was that it? Was that it on that? On oh, third, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and so he wanted some of that same red pottage. So therefore, they called his uh, name. Was it Edom? Edom? Edom, which means red. Now let's go to Second Ezra chapter six and nine, and we're going to go back a little bit. Second Ezra, Ezra chapter six, verse nine. Second Ezra six and verse nine. For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Now that's the, where we get that from is the fact that when Esau came out first and Jacob took his heel, held on to his heel, there was a meaning behind that thing. And that was the meaning. If you read in the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 8 and then verse 9, but then if you pick up and go back to Genesis, it speaks of how when the children were born, when the, elder, uh, the oldest boy, Esau, came out all red and hairy, his brother Jacob came out. They didn't even give a description on how he looked because he looked the same. He looked just like all the other, other babies that's always been born. But he took hold of Esau's heel. So that's the mystery right there. A lot of churches, I never learned that. Even if I had read it, I would probably never known what, it, what the meaning behind that was. So, but believe it or not, our churches, our, those pastors out there in the Christian churches, even from probably the Catholic churches, uh, these churches that uh, hold the banner over them and, and with Christianity, you'd be surprised of those pastors and ministers or whatever you want to call them out there that know these facts, but they don't teach them. So the people in the congregations basically go around kind of dumbfounded. They, 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 they never read these things. So now these things are being bought out. They're being bought out by a group of men that uh, hit the scene. They call their Israelites. But the reason why this, this see these people have uh, recognized who they are. They 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 woke up, so to speak. What's that? Uh, give me that. The Psalms. Uh, was it eighty-five and eleven? Psalms eighty-five and eleven. Give me that eighty-five. Well, it just hit me for some reason. Yes. Psalms 85, verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Man, when I read that, I, I, that's, that's the only thing I could think about. Uh, you know, uh, uh, becoming an a Israelite, getting into this truth, and learning the things that, uh, and seeing the brothers that, that I see uh, all across our nation that's on the street corners teaching this truth. And when I read that, it, it hit me as like, yeah, you know, the truth has sprung, spring, sprung up out of the earth, you know, uh, because we never had this phenomenon happen before. And, and, and because now, since this thing has come to being, it's a lot of people become threatened by this thing. It's a whole lot of people become threatened. It's unbelievable. You know, now they're going to start calling your names. Now they're going to start labeling, labeling you as 
uh, hate groups, uh, radical, and so forth. And the only thing we're doing is teaching out of the Bible. Uh, I have I have yet to sit here and spoke uh, out of my own mind or uh, gave my own opinion. Now, some people may say, well, uh, I've interpreted things. Well, I can't do that. I've only read the Word of God as it is written. And that's it in a nutshell. Give me that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, give me uh, Amos 1 and 11. Amos 1 and 11. Amos 1, <clears throat> verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. Now Esau... Remember, at first, they called him Esau when he was born. He had no pigmentation, wasted away as he. And then when he ate that pottage, and he wanted that red pottage, his name became Edom. Now, this man, even being a singular man as we speak of, he ended up having children. He ended up spreading his seed all over. So as he spread his seed over a large amount of time, he actually himself created a nation. And people don't realize this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got the fan blowing on the screen around. <laughs> this, uh, this man has created a nation. And the Bible speaks of quite a few nations. But if people don't realize that the African, so-called African-American, the Negro man, and this man, Esau, his people, are the focal point of the whole Bible. Even though they speak of other nations, the focal point is actually us, the Israelites, and that other nation that we call Caucasian. In the Bible, God calls them Edom. That's the reason why Amos was speaking of us. Read that again. Amos 1 and verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. Now, when it's saying here, if you can remember, Edom, the reason why Esau had wrath, had a wrath, had hatred for his brother. It's because Esau did something that a lot of people we don't pay attention to do, uh, when we read about Esau and his brother. Give me that uh, where he sold his birthright. Is that uh, further down in Genesis? We, I know we stopped at 34. Genesis 25 and verse 31. And Jacob said, Tell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? Now he sold his birthright. This birthright was something that was basically God-given. It was uh, traditionary or custom. When the eldest son, okay, got the blessing, so to speak, when the father died, the eldest son was supposed to get the first blessing from the father. Things that the father had, he would pass it down to the eldest son. Now Esau, think about what he said right there. He said, what is this birthright to me? You know, you know, it, he's kicking it to the curb. So that was kind of like an insult in a sense. Because this thing, was, this was a God-given type of blessing. Esau's kicking it to the curb as if it has no meaning because he wanted some pottage. So he sold his birthright, but over time when Esau realized he made a mistake, he ended up hating his brother. And I'm going to get to that in a second. Give me Genesis 27 and 41. Genesis 27 and verse 41. 
It says, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessings were with his father. He, he blessed him. He, Esau hated his brother because of the e, the blessing that his father gave. Esau gave it up, I think. Do you remember when we were just reading? He said, his brother was like, hey, man, some of you birthright people want some of this soup. He said, man, I'm about to die. I'm, st I'm faint. Give me, man, what does this birthright got to do with me? You know, so he sold his birthright. Read, really? was that all of it? And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. So what had happened, as time went by, Esau, his, sense, his senses came to him. He realized what he'd done. So he's going to get an attitude with his brother. He's going to get a, a, a royal attitude with his brother because of something that he did. He sold his birthright. And then when Isaac gave the blessing to uh, Jacob, then he's going to get developed so much hatred in him that is that hatred tore perpet perpetually. Mm -hmm. Perpetual means ongoing. It's, it's, it's uh, ongoing. It, it never stops when something's in perpetual motion. Give me that in uh, Ezekiel 30, I think it's at uh, 35. Ezekiel 35, and we're going to read verses 5 and 6. Ezekiel 35, <clears throat> in verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword, in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end, therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sit, see if thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Now you think about this thing. I'm taking you all through this because I want you to think about this replacement theory. Uh, the people with this much hate, and this hatred has gone on for thousands of years perpetually, how can they sit and think in their own mind that the Most High God is going to bless them and allow them to stay in control of this planet and rule with that kind of hate in them. I mean, you have to think about that. This is uh, way back in the beginning of it when I, I spoke of in Job 9.24 that the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. Not only wicked, but these people got a hatred in them a hatred that's perpetual, ongoing. And we as uh, the Israelites, we have to deal with this hatred. We've been dealing with this hatred for hundreds, even thousands of years. Because we have been subjected, subjected and we was put in captivity by the same people at a point in time. And these, and these same people they did not let up on us. They kept that hate going. And they showed that they hated us. So this thing was perpetual. It's kind of like engraved into their DNA to hate us and dislike us. I mean, people fake good. And this on this earth today, I don't care what, I don't care what you say. You can wear your wealthy work. These people can smile in your face and, 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 and pat you on the back and get along with you at work. That's because they got to. But deep down inside, these people still have that same hate. They still have that same animosity for us. Give me that in uh, uh, Hebrews 12. Go to Hebrews 12, honey. And they, and they jealous of us. Hebrews 12 and verse 16 and 17. Hebrews 12 and verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Now see, this thing here, we just read that. This is in Hebrews in the New Testament. We just read that. He sold his birthright. And once he sold, that man sold his birthright. When it come to him, he realized <laughs> when he, it tore him up on the inside. And I mean, he cried. He cried with a bitter cry. 
But at the same time, what did it say? The, 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 he found no repentance. Though he saw, it says, he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He sought it carefully with tears. A lot of people don't understand what that means. God knew this young man uh, when he was a baby. He knew that soul that he put in him. And he knew he was going to be a horrible person. He knew he was going to be a hateful person. God already knew that thing. That, that, that was what, they, what we call it's all by design. So most high God, has, he, how does God, how do you think that a God, a righteous God, would keep a person like that in rulership? Ruling his planet. I don't think so. And those people know it. These, these people know this Bible a little bit better than a lot of people, a lot of them let on. They know some things and they're afraid. They're scared because they know for a fact that those black people that they beat up on for so long are God's people. They know for a fact. That something's coming down the pike, and they are so afraid because the way this world is today, we know we're, we're, we're stepping into the end of days. We're stepping into the end of times. And that transition is getting ready to, it's, it's coming. Yeah. So these people are doing everything they can to try to hold their place, to try to hold their position. And when they, they're, they're, they see themselves losing their grip, it's like they're losing their grip on things. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, my mind went. Give me that in uh, Job. <laughs> Let's go to Job 30. Chapter 30, and we're going to read verse 29. See, all this, these people are, 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 are in the Bible. And uh, when you when you learn how to read it, you, you start picking up on things. And you start picking up on little particulars, uh, little little nuts and, 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 and bolts that uh, you see how you start. T uh, what is it? Uh, connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. give, give me that in Job thirty twenty nine. Job thirty in verse twenty nine. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. So Job is saying, I am a brother to dragons. I wonder why that is. Reason being, because Job already knew about the Edomites. And they was, exist they, they, uh, they was already in the world. Back during the time of Job. He knew, he had to, he knew about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He, he knew about Esau being born. So he knew the personality of Esau. And he called him a dragon. Now, it's funny how the Bible you can connect dots because you can come go from Job's day all the way to Revelations. Watch this. Give me Revelations 12. And I ain't going to get deep off into this, but this is, this is so peculiar how, I ain't going to say peculiar, but it's just marvelous how you can connect a dot from way back in Job's time and all the way into the New Testament to Revelations. And that's the revealing Okay, that's the last book of the Bible. Give me Revelation 12, and just, uh, I think it's just verse 3. Revelation 12 and 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. That great red dragon, once you start dwelling into that book of Revelation, it's talking about the same man <laughs> that we talked about uh, that was uh, the guy that his name was Esau, his uh, what, Jacob's brother, yeah, yeah. the one that was born that uh, came out red all over like a hairy garment. See, that's 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 what I'm gonna just give you that, but I had to bring that together and put that together to show you how the the term red, uh, you know, when you're dealing with the devil, uh, for some reason we always looked at the devil as being some little red guy had a tail, pitchfork horns on his head and what have you. And it wasn't quite that way. And matter of fact, it was so subtle, the devil been up on our noses almost all our life and we didn't even know that devil who we was looking at was the devil. Mm -hmm. Because it was so subtle. You know, devil means deceiver. Excuse me. So we've been deceived. But that man 
that we call the devil, that the Bible calls the devil, are the people that we look at every day. And it's the same people that have this basic fear for us, that want to always constantly try to keep us under their thumb, or if we try to uh, come out of our conditions, uh, or, or better ourselves, uh, now we're coming to light, we're, we're, we're seeing things, we're understanding the word of God, and it's like, it's amazing to them, but it's put so much fear in them, they can't do nothing but continue with hate. They got to keep, uh, try to put that smoke screen up to the rest of the world to make the rest of the world say, see, look at them, they're haters, they're haters, there's something wrong with them, you know. And again, like I said, the only thing we do is teach the word of God. God had this thing preordained from the beginning of time. God already knew who he was going to choose to rule this planet. Uh, I got, give me that in Romans. Uh, let, me, let me see, but I got to see it. Romans 9. And, and it's talking about Esau and Jacob. I think nine and then go, maybe I'll start at nine and nine. And then we're going to read down through 11. Uh, <clears throat> Romans 9 and verse 9. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Remember, Sarah had a son. Sarah was the wife of Abraham, and the son that has been spoken of right here is Isaac. Read. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. Now the children that is being spoken of right here, the children is Esau and Jacob. Read. That the purpose of God according to the election might stand. Not of works, but of him that calleth. Now, what it's speaking of here is that neither have done any good or evil. That the purpose of God, according to election, might stand. God already made a choice, and he elected who he wanted to have that birthright way back at this point right here. Because remember in Genesis it said the elder shall serve the younger God. Most High God was talking to the mother Rebecca way back. We had to go back. She was having birth and pains. And she was like, Lord, if this be so, why am I thus? And the Lord told her, let's get that. Let's go. I don't think I bought that one out. That's Genesis probably, that's 25, maybe around 20. Yeah, 25. Genesis 25. <clears throat> and then verse 22. 22. And the children struggled together within her. The children were struggling in the mama's belly from the beginning. They in pitch black dark. I think about if you in your mama's belly, you can't see nothing. But these babies knew something was wrong. One knew something was wrong with the other. They couldn't get along even in the belly, read. And the children st struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Two nations are in your womb. What does that mean? Two nationalities. Two different people. Read. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy vows. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Now, see right there, when people read the Bible, they lose, <laughs> they, they lose where they at. They could read that, and if they was shown, if they was reading by themselves and nobody instructing them, they would all that would blow over the top of their head. Because when you go back to Romans, when we would go back to Romans, and it spoke of the fact that it says, read again, uh, 11, Romans 9, 9 and 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Read. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the there younger. There you go, right there. It was said unto her, way back, that the elder shall serve the younger. See, why do, the, why do these 
Pastors don't teach like that in churches. Why? Why? Tell me. I mean, I used to go to church. I never heard nobody read this and put it together to make sense out of this event. And then sum it up to show that, that, that this thing that was spoken of way back, most God had pre-ordained this thing. He'd already, he had already, uh, from the beginning, uh, give me that, what's that, uh, Isaiah uh, 46 and 10. I ain't even got this in my notes, but I, I had to throw that in. <laughs> Isaiah 46 and verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. See there, most I can declare the end from the beginning. Most I had already declared that that's all by design. Them folks out there, them folks, them, them, them Edomites, <laughs> them people know. They know what's up. That's why they hate us so. They hate us royally because, and but as long as we play dumb, I mean, they, they went on to snub their nose up at us or whatever, but see, the, the more we come into being, the more we come into showing that, hey, we know who we are, yeah. boy, they hate that thing. Yeah. <laughs> they, boy, they hate that thing with a passion. And they do all they can to try to throw dirt at us to make, uh, 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 don't get me wrong, there's some Israelite groups out there that's probably a little radical or what have you. That's the reason why we read a disclaimer. We have our disclaimer to let, us, let people know that we're not so affiliated with any other Israelite groups. Because we have a, with, with a, I don't want to say reputation, but we try to live up to a certain standard if we're going to preach this word of God. So we're not going to go out there and be radical. No, we can't do that thing. Because we, don't, we, we want to uh, show how just God works. He's, he's, he's a just God. So we as being his children, we have to act accordingly in a certain way, even though we know how wicked people are, even though we know how these people hate us. Give me that in Romans uh, 12, 18. Even though we be knowing these things, them people can't stand us. We got to work around them. We got to, got to uh, walk in the same shopping malls with them. What's that Romans? What did Paul tell us? 12, 18. Romans 12, verse 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Live peaceably with all men. That's how we show that we are uh, the children of God. Because, see, they treated us like scum, and we know that thing. We know that thing, but we still have a certain way we have to carry ourselves out here in the world. Let's go on now. Now, see, we're going to go on further because we know about this uh, replacement thing. See, we are the ones that's going to replace them people. That's what's eating them up on the inside. Some of our brothers say, we got next. When Mosiah comes to destroy this, 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 these kingdoms upon this earth, when he lays uh, Esau, the Edomites, he's going to lay, uh, what it says, uh, going to lay them waste. Yep. He's going, he's going to tear down their kingdoms. He's going, they may rebuild, but he's going to throw down. He's going to throw all these kingdoms down that's run by them people. From the French, from the Germans, to the Russians, to the Spaniards, to the Portuguese, to, the, to the, every Caucasian nation there is on the planet. Most High is going to tear them down. They can't stand that thing. They're afraid of that thing. They know what's coming. And they know this also. Give me Isaiah 45 17. Yes, they know this one. Isaiah 45, <laughs> in verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. All praises. They know this thing. They know this thing. They've been knowing it. But they don't teach it. Give me Deuteronomy 
7 and 6. It goes back even to, to the time of Moses. The Most High God told Moses, we was already chosen. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Read. Deuteronomy 7 in verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Man, don't that make you feel good, bro? Oh, yeah. I mean, when I first, I never heard it in my life. I was, uh, when I first, before I got, uh, come to TTIC, before Christ led me here, I was 58 years old when I first started seeing some brothers standing on the corners with these posters, and they was shaloming, and they was reading out the Bible and putting it together, and then I looked down at their they, they shirts, and they had yeah. these, had these, Fringily things, or I'm like, what the devil is that? But they, the way these brothers was laying, laying it out, I was understanding it, and I'm thinking, wow, I didn't know that uh, I was an Israelite. I didn't know the God that God had chose us. Only thing I ever been told was the lies that the people that run them other Christianity churches. The lies that they, you know, they was, you talking about keeping a man down. They was keeping a brother down. Yeah. They was keeping a brother down. Give me that, uh, let me, let's go to, uh, back to Second Ezra. Because even though the Most High, see, the Most High, like I said, he declared the, 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 the end from the beginning. Give me that Second Ezra 6, and we're going to go to 54. Second Ezra 6 and verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thou creatures, of him come we all. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Uh, and the, what does he say there right there? And the people also whom thou hast chosen. But let's go back a little bit further about, about Adam. What did he say about Adam? He said. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thou creatures, of him come we all. Of him come we all. We all came from Adam. Wow, I be hearing people that want to come against us or try to call themselves stepping up, you know, going to, yeah. <laughs> going to argue with us. Or with, with, I don't like to use that, excuse me, word argument, but they like, we all come from Adam. Yes, but, what did it say? What, what it said, we all come from Adam, but, it says, and, and, also and, 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 the, and the people, what did it say? <laughs> it says, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. Man, the world was made for our sakes. The world was made for the Israelites' sakes, not for the other people. Not for the, those other people don't even realize they were only on the planet so they could uh, serve us because we were supposed to have been teaching them this word right here and most our God coming back with his son Christ and set things in order and that's what we'll be doing again see that's what we will be we'll be living and eating and drinking and every, this word this word will be fanatical that's alright but we'll have the kingdom, though. Yeah. We'll be fanatics, yeah. but we'll have the we'll have, we'll have the kingdom. Yeah. Our praises, yeah, because we will be we'll be getting we'll we'll be learning things that we don't understand now. We'll probably be learning some deeper things far beyond our imaginations right now, and then we'll be in rulership. We won't have to pay for nothing. Everything will belong to us the way it's supposed to. Everything will be put back in its own natural order. Even the trees and the birds and the animals and everything will act, be acting different. Because everything will be back in its natural order. Give me, let's go to Isaiah 14. Now, watch this. Isaiah 14, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. <laughs> See, this is what them people are afraid of. This is what they can't stand. Isaiah 14. In verse 1, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. 
and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. Wow. Is that it? And they shall rule over their oppressors. <laughs> Man, I bet you if we went in, I bet if we went in one of these Christian churches and read that for them, especially Edomite church. I wonder how many I bet I bet we'll look out there in the audience and we'll see how many Edomites is really out there. Because yeah. them faces will be beat red. Yeah. <laughs> them faces yeah. will be beat red. Yeah. But some wise guy is gonna come up and re <laughs> try to <laughs> come up against that right there. Yeah. They always yeah. do. Yeah. They, they find some kind of way to try to say, oh, well, that ain't true. That was uh, due to this, that, and the other. They would come up with some kind of way to try to uh, 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 say that ain't, that's not what that's talking you know, about. But why not? Because let's go to Exodus 21 and, and, and 16. What is that been, been, been possessing? When you possess something, means what? Don't it kind of mean like you own it? Mm -hmm. you can't, you don't it kind of mean like you rule over it? Yep. It's yours. What's the, uh, uh, then let's go to uh, Exodus 21 and 16. Exodus 21 and verse 16. And he that stilleth a man and selleth him, or he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Now, what happened to us? The way we got over in America is we didn't grab our suitcase. We didn't, you know, we didn't have our top hat and our old and our and our no. <laughs> smoking the cigars, got on a ship and you know, uh cruised over, here. cruised over here with luxuries and you know, uh top of the day to you, uh off uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cheerio, you know, we, we didn't come over doing all that. I mean you know, hey, we came over here, we was made to come over. We was kidnapped. We was basically kidnapped. We came over here against our own will. We were forced. So, and we were oppressed. But to show you how a just God we have, he ain't forgot about that thing. He's gonna set it. He's gonna what was that we used to say in the street? Or the white boys would say we're gonna uh, settle that score. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most high is gonna settle that score. Yeah. See, he's gonna come back and 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 and, and, and turn it right around. And if everything they did to us, we're gonna do to them. But we'll be doing it under the mighty hand of of a just God. When we do it, see, they did it without God, but we're going to do it with God. Give me, uh, uh, let's go to Revelation 13, 10. Revelation 13 and verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. <coughs> We were led into captivity by a group of people. And them same people killed us with swords. Yep. To make it take it further, them same people used us as, as gator bait, bear bait, everything, all kind of bait. Yep. Them same people built a whole nation off our backs, off our sweat. Didn't pay us a dime. So all the proceeds went to them. So they would have made a hundred percent profit. And they was able to start their trade and their, their investments and, and all kind of stuff. And yes, they got very wealthy off of us. And we didn't make a man, that's 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 treachery. That's treachery. So it says that he that leadeth in the captivity, captivity must go into captivity. Must. Didn't say must. But I know it said that he that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Read that again. All right, it says he that leadeth into captivity shall, shall go, go into captivity. 
and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. So see, that's what they gonna get. That's what they're afraid of. Them people are frightened out of their wits. They are frightened out of their wits to knowing that the day is gonna come and the Most High God is gonna settle the score. And what was that last part? It said, that "Here is the patient." Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Who are the saints? Give me that. Give me that Psalms 148 and 14. Got to have patience. Got to have patience. Psalms 148 and verse 14. He also exalteth, exalteth, exalt, exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints. Even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. Who the saints? The children of Israel. All praises. All praises. We are the children of Israel. Yeah. Didn't say Edom was the children of Israel. Didn't say Ammon, Moab, the Hagarenes. Didn't say the Philistines, the Canaanites. None of them. Edomites, yeah. the children of Israel. Those people, they are such identity thieves to this day. They still trying to rob her out of our identity, man. Yeah. That is, that's pure wickedness. These people are identity thieves. They, 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 <laughs> wow. They got the people over there now that's uh, 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 part of the Edomites. They're on the, the clan of the Amalek or whatever, you know, the, the Roman converts. They're mm -hmm. white folks yeah. claiming to be Israel, yeah. but they're Israeli. And they call themselves Jewish. Yep. They know they ain't the real doggone thing. They know they're imposters. And here, give me a Isaiah. Uh, is it Isaiah? I'm going to let my brain go to. Uh, where am I going at? Uh, 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 Exodus. Back to Exodus uh, 4 and 22. Right. Exodus, Exodus 4 and 22. See, we go back as far as that just, it, God, like I said, God has already preordained. He already had it mapped out and planned out who was going to be his. Exodus 4 and 22. Exodus 4 in verse 22. It says, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Wow. Most High God had that already in the making from that time. He called us his son. Man, that's a special thing. Yeah. His firstborn. Man, that's right, that's right up there. That's right up there with Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, that's right up there with him. We're up under him. But that's that's a, that's a heck of a thing to be have that kind of position, man. To have that kind of position. Reason being, let's go to Revelations 2 and 9. Revelations 2 and verse 9. It says, I know thou works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know them, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. We are, since we're the children of, of, of God calls us his firstborn, we are his sons. And he knows what the nations have done to us in time. That's why he says he knows our, 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 our tribulations. He knows our poverty. He knows our works. Most of us now, he's seen everything we've gone through. And he says he knows he lets us know, but we are rich. We are rich, actually, because why? We were given the promises. We were given the covenants. We were already given the, the promise to rule this planet. That was already given to us. That's more wealth than you can ask for. That's more wealth than you can ask for. And he says, and he also knows the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not. Those are those people I just talked, spoke of, the uh, Amalek, the white folks that's claiming to be Jew, Jews of today. Yeah. 
Shalom, shalom, most high Christ bless them same people claiming to be the Jews and are not. But what do you call them? The synagogue of Satan. See, that's, that, that pisses, I mean, that ticks them off right there. <laughs> that ticks them off. Give me Isaiah 43 and 1. Isaiah 43 and verse 1. It says, But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Most has already called us by our name, Israel. Because when he when when Jacob wrestled with that angel in in, in uh uh what, what did he say is he had he had uh What's that word he used? No, he had. Uh, no, he wrestled with the angel. And I was going to say, uh, he didn't come from, but well, he, 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 he won the fight, so to speak. What is that he said? Man, I lost my, my train of thought there for a second. Second, uh, <coughs> prevail. That's where I'm going with it. He said, that He had prevailed, but he told him. He said, what is your name? He said, Jacob, your name is not no longer Jacob, but Israel. And that was the meaning of that. Uh, can, you, can you find that? What is that? Uh, I didn't have it wrote down. I was like, uh, is it 32 and something? Genesis 32. 27, 32 or 32. Genesis 32 and verse 28. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Unless you want to go up a little bit more about the rest of it. No, that, no, no that's okay. okay. Just that part. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For a prince has thou power with God and with man, and has prevailed. That's it, yes. As, and has prevailed, but we are. Our name, the meaning is a prince that has power with God and with man. So our name means a lot more to us than the uh, uh, the, the slave names, you know, that, that we've been given through slavery. So that name Israel is something to be proud of. You know, there's nothing to be ashamed of, you know. And then the nations that hate us, you know, they're trying to make you feel bad like you're doing something wrong because you want to uh, claim your name. Give me Luke uh, 1 and 68. Shalom, 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 shalom. Luke 1 and 68. And this is still dealing with our redemption. Luke 1 and verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. He has visited and redeemed his people. Who is his people? Matthew 1 and 21. And let his people, and this when we go to Matthew 1 21, this is the uh, uh, what Christ came to do, all in one package here. Matthew 1 and verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. He shall save his people. His people were the people were the Israelites. Give me that in Matthew 15, 24. Again, it speaks of his people. Matthew 15, in verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. There we go again. Christ said himself, I was speaking right there. He said, he said, I am not sent but. That but means only. I am not sent but only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because we are his people. Where, uh, uh, where does it say where Christ came from? What is it in Judah? What is that, uh, uh, that is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah? Okay. What is that, uh, is that Hebrew? 
Hebrews 7 and verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So there's evidence right there as we, we have the evidence where Christ came from. The, the Edomites didn't come from Judah and, and no other nation, but the, the, uh, the people of Judah were called Jews. So the, the word Jews was short. So we wouldn't have to just say Judah. But Christ came from that, that region. And so did his, uh, so did our ancestors. That's why we know that we are the Israelites, because our forefathers came from that region. Uh, did we go to Luke 1 and 69? Did you read just 168? Luke 1, Luke 169. 69. 69. Luke 1 and verse 69. It says, And he hath raised an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. So that, that horn of salvation was Christ. That's, 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 uh, the Most High raised Christ up specifically for that. Okay? He, he was going to be a horn of salvation. Christ was his people. For the Israelites, for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, give me Acts 5 and 31. We get close to the end, folks. Ain't got much longer. Acts 5 and 31. Acts 5 and verse 31. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. Wow. Now tell me, man, how come people, when they read it, they can't get that? How come everybody in the world, well, you could take a little Chinese man, and when he, read, when he, he reads it, he thinks it's something about him. Yeah. Like, like, like the word Israel has a universal um, uh, 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 coding or something that whoever reads this, that, that, that's, that's me right there. See, see? That's, the, that's the spiritual Israel. It, okay, is that what they call it? I, I forgot about that. The spiritual Israel, yeah. Uh, like spiritual uh, fringes. Yeah. Uh, spiritual. <laughs> I forgot all about that spiritual uh, uh, nonsense. Yeah. Well, well, I think what, what it is. Uh, they try to correlate that with the mysteries of the book of Revelations because, uh, you know, America is called uh, spiritual battle line. Mm -hmm. I think that's where they get that from. I think their pastors kind of like them just missed the boat on that part. You know what I'm saying? Well, if it could be, a, if America could be spiritual battle line, maybe I could have spiritual fridges on. Uh, maybe I could be a spiritual Israelite. <laughs> wow. Let me get uh, uh, Luke 1 and 71. We're going to keep rolling down through here. <laughs> All right, Luke 1 and verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Man, what people need saving? What people that's always uh, subjected to the hand of their enemies. Seem like to me, us colored folks, yep. <laughs> as they call us. Yep. The African American, uh, 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 blacks. Seem like we've always been subjected to some kind of way of being under some kind of servitude of somebody, some kind of way. Yes, a bossing. You know, with all that. It's us. But see, the rest of the world don't want us, our eyes to open up to that thing. The rest of the world wants us to stay blind. Because as long as we stay blind, and as long as we stay in sin, they stay in power. Yeah. They keep the ball. And they're afraid of losing the ball. Now, so if I don't, you know, it's going to be our turn no matter what. Don't you think so? Also, it's going to be our turn. No matter. Can't stop the Lord's work. No, they can't stop it. 
No, they can't stop. Now, it speaks of the fact that of the, of the, of, we're going to be saved from the hand of all the haters. Let me let you jump all the way back again. Leviticus 26, 17. Because this has been going on from way back in the beginning. We've had the hands that hate us. We have, we've had people that hate us. Leviticus 26, 17. We're going to read down uh, 17, 18. And then we're going to read 21, 23. Right, Leviticus 26 and verse 17. And I will set my face against you. And ye shall be slain before your enemies. Wow. Most High said he sets his face against you. When God sets his face against you, that is the most horriblest thing that can happen to a person. You done for. What did he say to do? He set his face against us and what? And ye shall be slain before And we enemies. shall be slain before our enemies. That means we will be killed right in the in the in the in the, in the, in the face of our enemies. When we when, when they kill us. They do it right before their eyes. Our enemies get to see us die right in front of them. When Mosai sets his face against us. Oh, was that, uh, continue, was that 18? and 17. And you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. And they that hate us will reign over us. Is that it? And ye shall flee when none pursue And we shall flee when none pursue us. That happened when, uh, you can bring it up to date probably even when I was young. <laughs> I mean, from the time of the 60s when our brothers and sisters went out there and they was marching and they supposed to be able to, uh, uh, you know, have pre peaceful protests and they would go out there and and and, uh, and that's also, I, I got a precept even in uh, Deuteronomy, I think, where they go out, peaceful protests, but the white man stands right here and he says, don't cross that line. And some of us get bold when we would do it. What they do, they sick the dogs oh, on us. Yeah. They had the fire department spraying yeah. them high-powered hoses. And we would come out when that's what it was. We'd come out one way against them. But we flee seven ways. Yeah. <laughs> We'd yeah. be running every which way. Yeah. But the thing of it was, you know, we would always end up fleeing when none pursue, even, even to the fact that when we was young, sometimes man, we'd be walking and playing. We, we got a little older and stuff. And we might be doing something really, but doing nothing wrong or nothing, but we see the police and get nervous mm -hmm. and run. Yep. What the hell we, we running for? Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and half the time we was running, police wouldn't even pay no attention to us. Yep. Let me get that in the... Uh, was it uh, verse 21? That was 17. 17, give me 21 and 23. Did you want 18 still? Uh, yeah, was we done? Was it finished with 18? We do 18. Yeah. Okay, we do 18. <clears throat> verse 18. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times wow. for your sins. Man. And for all this, if we still don't listen to the Most High, he said he was going to punish us seven times. Why in the world does it seem like the African-American people, the black man, whenever we do get caught up in something wrong, why is it that our punishment is more harsher than anybody else? And that's a fact. That is a fact. A black guy could be doing selling drugs and a white dude could be selling drugs and they could probably be selling the same kind of drugs with the same kind of weight of drugs, all that, how that it go. I guarantee you the white boy get off with a lesser sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Reason being because, see, the white boy wasn't God's child. And white boy, <laughs> I mean, I, I, hey, I ain't even going to say I hate to say it, but it's a fact. It's just like a replacement theory is a fact. See, an Edomite boy was not God's child. He was a child of the devil. But to read, but us being the most high God's children, he said, what did he say he going to do? And I will punish you seven times more for your sins. He punished us seven times more for our, for our sins. Was that it on that one? Yeah. Got any more? In verse 21, is that what you want? Right? Yeah. And if you will walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. Wow. 
Don't that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Man, seven times. That, that means uh, Most High gives us a royal behind whooping. Seven times. Is that it on that one? Man, yeah, that's it on that. You got it? You got no, it? Like, you it right <laughs> we get it seven times yeah, worse than yeah. anybody else. That shows who God's children is. Yeah. That's right. the, the Edomites, they take it credit for all everything. Oh, look what we did to that black boy. Yeah, yeah we showed them, didn't we? Now it was you it was the most high that did that. Yeah. That was the most high that did that thing, because we are his children. Yeah. He said it. He would punish us seven times more. What, what, what's the name? Uh, uh, 23 was 23. Said 23. Uh -huh. Verse 23. And if you would not be reformed by me, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. <laughs> there it goes again. Mm -hmm. Walk well, contrary. Most high, it, like I said, hey, we know that we are his children just from that, those facts right there. I mean, yeah, it's I just, still don't see this thing right there, man. I know it. Yeah. I can remember. I can remember my parents be like, man, when I got out of order, and, and you know they was what's that thing he says? Uh, oh man, talking about promising you or something. I ain't gonna promise you. I, I forget how they put it, you yeah. know. But it was almost like the same way. Just like man, you know, hey, you get out of order. Hey, you done for. <laughs> you do <Right>. that. <laughs> yeah. So we're supposed to be really over here getting in order instead of being over here conducting ourselves in the ways that we are. You know, because yeah. if we get punished more than anybody else, that lets you know right there that we're supposed to be over here getting ourselves together. This ain't no party spot. That's right. This ain't That's no... Right. Uh, uh, Every night we hitting the club. Every night we we balling out. Every night we doing this. You know we supposed to be getting yeah. ourselves in order. That's that's this is what this is showing you right here. Yeah, but it, it shows you that how messed up we are. Though, yeah. You know, and and uh, for the most part, you know, it's it's just these churches. It's that banner of Christianity. It's what these people have been uh, bought up in these yeah. churches, and they the pastors have not gone any further. To teach who we are. And then we also, we got to take accountability. You know, we can't. We, it's, it's time for us to wake up. Exactly. And, and get ourselves together. We can't, you know, we can't uh, just, you know, keep on holding on to, you know, this person did it. This person did it. We got to, we got to, it's time for us to wake up. Yeah. You know, yeah. we got to, we got to get ourselves together. We got to get in order. So I saw all this information out here. Truth's coming out, man. We out here on the corners. Truth's going out around the world. We got right. YouTube, Facebook, all this truth and knowledge coming out. You know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. time for us to take accountability and start raising up. I say it all the time. Yeah. You know, just take the world, the technology we got. Shalom, and, uh, shalom. It's no more excuse. It's slow, slow, most like Christ. But um, give me a, um, let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Because we've been talking about them enemies, them, them enemies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, them enemies started way back. Yeah. But but right before we came over here, it was proven to put, we still had them enemies. Yeah. Deuteronomy 28, 68. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28, and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies, for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. There it is. I mean, I can't see why people can't see that thing. It didn't say we was gonna be sold to our bosom buddies, yeah. sold to our friends, sold to some folks that's gonna love us. He said we was gonna get sold to folks that was our enemies, man. And why is it that after 350, 400 years, our people turn around and look at them same people as, as if them, them people have changed their minds? Are we like y'all now? Well, the only reason why they do like us is because we 
shoot a basketball, run fast. Bring in some more money. Bring in some money and we dance real good. Entertain them. Yeah, entertain them. Yeah. Advice. That's when they love you. Because mm -hmm. they love the greenbacks we can bring in to them. Yes. And they still give them, they still give them, compared to what a NBA, uh, a bat, a NBA basketball owner of a club uh, uh, make, compared to what he gives his players, it's still crumbs, yeah. ain't it? Because mm -hmm. if you own that team, you making vast amount of money. Yeah. You see. But nevertheless, these people... Is it stated the point I was making here that these people sold us to enemies? Give me that Deuteronomy 28, 25. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28 and verse 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shalt be removed into all kingdoms of the earth. That's what I, that's what I, yeah. I forgot I had that one in there. I was kind of quoting it <coughs> before I got to it. And you know we had been scattered all over. You know we were scattered in the kingdoms and other and other places and other countries and everything. But at the same time, you know, uh, is that we would be uh, uh, smitten before enemies. How come the black man can't get that through his thick head? I don't know why. You know we read earlier about what Paul Paul spoke of in Romans twelve and eighteen. He said with everything alive in us or whatever. Yeah. We are to get along with all men. Even with finding this truth and finding out who we are, we still should get along. We should not be walking around with our nose stuck up in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Chest puffed out, back all puffed up and everything like that. We can't be, be that way, you know? But we respect a person, you know? Uh, 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 you, you might give, you know, I say smile, but you know, the smiles could be frowns turned upside yeah, down. That was, <laughs> that was an old song back in the day. Yeah. But you know, you got to play the role, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then until we make it, you know, on that part. Let me get uh, Micah uh, 210. We get ready to close down. I got a few more precepts. This is winding it down. Micah 210. Micah 2 in verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. This place, America, is polluted. And a lot of our people, you know, they try their best to, uh, you know, make this the best home that they think they, they got, you know. And, he, and, and the prophet is telling us uh, arise. That's because they, you know, we know right now for a fact we can't live, we can't leave this place physically. I mean, you know, <laughs> mother countries, what they going through? That's why we gonna leave this and go through the same thing in another country? Yep. You know, might as well stay here, get ourselves together here, and wait on the Most High. That's remember we were talking about the patience of the saints. Yep. You know, here's the patience, the faith of the saints. We got to do it right here. But we can come out of their ways. See, our black, black folks, we don't even understand, man. This is not our rest. You know, we're not going to find rest here. You know, I think I forget where this stuff. I've had to take it back to Deuteronomy. Uh, was it 2864, 65? Where it says, our souls of our feet won't have rest. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is not our rest. A lot of people have gotten comfortable because a lot of people got the good jobs, you know. Yeah, we watch some of our favorite sports uh, 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 icons and stuff and movie stars and things. We, and we think this place is paradise, you know. This is it. This is it. You know, this, this, you know, but this is not a rest because I guarantee them same people that get caught up in their comfort, they'll find out that they're still slaves. Yeah. They'll find out that somebody still hates them because somebody in their family will get gunned down. I mean, look at all them little kids out there. Uh, what was that in Texas? Yeah. That was a, a lot of our brothers and sisters. Like there was. That was a lot of our brothers and sisters, man. They got gunned down like it. Give me what you got. You got that? You well, got I ain't know if you want 2865. You want that? Uh, the one that's got. Uh, you should find no ease. Yeah, find no ease. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28, verse 65. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. 
See, my, the prophet right here, even Michael, was basically kind of saying the same thing. He, he was letting us know that, you know, we were, this is not a place of our risk, because this place is polluted. It is polluted. And it's doing, you know, uh, we've just continued to repeat the cycle of over the same things that we've always been over, to, you know, for hundreds of years. Give me that, uh, let's mind this down. Let me get Re Revelations 18 and 4. <clears throat> Revelations 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. See, we don't want to receive the, uh, the plagues. It's, it's talking about that nuclear fire, it, you know, that's going to come when most High comes and, and, and Christ and, 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 and does away with this place. And coming out of them, again, we can't leave this place, you know, physically. Not yet, you know. Uh, not the way we, if we could, we would. We've done it a long time ago. But we have to come out of this nation's ways philosophies, you know, philosophies, right? Our people, our people are so messed up, we don't even know how much power we got. And, and, you know, it, it, right now, in our current condition, we still got power. You realize if every black person woke up and when we and started doing this one thing, quit buying pork. <laughs> if we all want in one day, if everybody stopped bad bacon, Anything that, man, don't you know the stock market would drop? Yeah. We would mess, we got the power to mess up the stock market and the trade and all that yeah. with one commodity, mm -hmm. with one little measly plane. I was getting ready to say a word. Negro, <laughs> put the bacon down. <laughs> Leave the ham alone. Don't buy, if we if we did that, I guarantee you, if everybody, did, they, uh, see, White man knows how to do that. They have embargoes and stuff like that on the country. Yeah. But we ain't gonna buy your product. We ain't gonna do this, we ain't gonna do that. And then make somebody, hit somebody in the pocket. If we got the power to hit these people in the pocket, don't even know it. Yeah. All you gotta do is just give up the bacon and the sausage and the, and the, uh, the, the uh, uh, all the other pork byproducts or whatever, pig ear, pigtail, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Them, them trotters, we used to call them trotters. Them pork big skins, pigs, them pork yeah. skins, oh, and all that. I, man, we could do it. Uh, uh, it, it was, if we did it, it would scare the black man. Because we would be almost become an overnight sensation. People would be like, man, white man be like, what, what's, hey, Barney, what, what's, what's going on with these numbers here? <laughs> man, they would be devastated. But it's just that we don't even understand the power we got to even get a jump start to show if we wanted to get back at you. And this is how we're going to get back at you. You kill our people, you gun them down in the street, you treat us like dirt. We're going to do the right thing. We quit eating pork. Y'all yeah. eat the pork. Find, the Chinese, find some old Chinese to eat your pork. Yeah. And then and, and, uh, and I'm put making not really... Excuse me, the light of it, but it's, it's serious business. If we did, excuse me, if we did that, we can mess them up. Yeah. Give me seven, nine, two, and one. Zephaniah two and one. <clears throat> Zephaniah two and verse one. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. We are the nation not desired, brothers and sisters. We are that nation. That same nation that uh, we were sold to our enemies. The Most High God caused a lot of things to happen to us because of us being his children. He caused these things to happen to us. But we gather together the same way I was speaking of in, in, in revelations coming out of their ways, coming out of their customs, coming out of their traditions. We ain't got to come out of the nation per se, but we can come out and quit doing what these people are doing and learn how to, 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 to uh, do your own customs. Most of like God gave us customs and traditions and things to do. Let's learn how to do our thing. 
That's what the the the, the uh, what we else we call them in uh, listen Genesis five and eleven the righteous acts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. Learn how to do our thing. That's coming out from amongst them people. But our people just can't get it. Give me that in the uh, just this we got a couple more Romans thirteen eleven. All my Israelite brothers and sisters, I don't know where I'm going with this. Romans 13 and verse 11. And that, knowing that time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe, than when we believe. Brothers and sisters, it's time to wake out of sleep. It is time. It's high time. It's high time. That we stop jack monkey, monkeying around, you know. Faking and fronting and checking and jiving. It's yeah, time to get it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> time to get it together for real. Yeah. It is. I mean, and, and, and uh, we got so many brothers and sisters out there that are so hard headed, man. It's like sometimes, man. Y'all know we all probably gonna feel like we're gonna wring somebody's neck sometime. I feel like I'm gonna grab somebody by the throat and just slam them down and hold them down and read the Bible to them. <laughs> Cause, cause I mean, cause you know the importance yeah. of this thing, yeah. and they, they they walk around like they know something that don't know crap, man. Yeah. That's all I got, brothers and sisters. Today, I hope you got something out of this. Uh, uh, today, you know, today's lesson, I really truly do. Uh, you got anything, officer? <clears throat> That's it. Well, and with that, we are T T I C, which stands for the truth in Christ. And with that, we'll say, shalom.